the ghost of Beamable. <laughs> and if you happen to miss our Game Jolt live stream, introducing everyone to Beamable, do not worry, for I have the highlight video for you here. <laughs> Remember, if you plan on using Beamable in your Spoopy Jam game, there's a chance you may be chosen to receive $1,000. Good luck. <laughs> While I'm dashing around the ring here, I can talk a little bit about how this multiplayer is working. It all goes through a relay service. So this is the, the client on my computer and the client on my phone are interacting with each other through the Beamable game relay, which is essentially conveying information about where I am, where the other little goblin is, and what actions we're taking. And it's a fully deterministic simulation. So all of the work of this physics is happening simultaneously on my phone and on my computer. I came in place two, I earned 20 coins. On my phone, I won, I got 30 coins. So that's, that's just a quick demo of the game itself. And um, what we've got in Unity uh, is a bunch of scenes. So one thing that I didn't show in the game, and actually let me rerun it just to, to show off leaderboards. Interacting with the world is delayed on the client side. That's a great question, Fernando. So there is a bit of latency to this game relay. Uh, it's on the order of about 100 to 200 milliseconds. So it wouldn't be suitable for like a Twitch oriented first person shooter, for instance, but uh, for for something here where a little bit of delay is kind of built into the gameplay, it works okay, and it's it's quite good for turn-based things like uh, chess games, card games, anything where 200 milliseconds latency isn't going to be an issue. So the reason I pulled up this leaderboard is I wanted to talk about the way that Beamable handles leaderboards. This scene was constructed using prefabs. So Beamable provides a whole bunch of Unity prefabs that you can just drag and drop into the scene and, uh, and have something fairly complex like a leaderboard up and running within minutes. It takes a little longer to kind of skin it, polish it, make it fit in with the theme of your game. But, um, but the basic functionality can be there almost instantly. So. So yeah, and I can I can kind of show the the leaderboard scene. Here it is. Uh, it's a pretty basic Unity scene, but these ones in blue, like the King of the Ring leaderboard flow and the leaderboard UI view, those are from prefabs that come from the from the Beamable package itself. And uh, yeah, so that's that's basically it for my my little brief demo. And um, I can, I'd be happy to dig into some of the other pieces that go into building games with Beamable, how the prefabs work, what the code looks like. So for this one, for King of the Ring, some of the stuff like the leaderboards is just prefabs dragged into the place. And some of it is a fair amount of C-sharp coding. And if you pull down the project from GitHub, you can see the parts of it that are C-sharp code. And we have fully fledged documentation at docs.bmobile.com that uh, kind of guide through various different features such as social features, uh, monetization features, multiplayer features, so on and so forth. And thank you for posting that link, Josh. Um, I got you. Cool, cool. Yeah, so um, let's take a look. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually open up a new project, kind of show what the initial uh, the initial installation process for Beamable looks like. You can just kind of start from scratch and, and show some of the nitty gritty details. I'm just going to create a brand new project in, I'm going to choose Unity 2019. While I'm doing that, uh, please feel free to... Quick, quick, 
Yeah. Quick question from the chat. It says, what about Unreal, or is there a way to write a wrapper for this to integrate with other game editors? So at present, we don't support Unreal. That's something that we're thinking of for the like more distant future. Ultimately, Beamable is multiple components. We've got the Unity SDK portion of it that is the Beamable package, and that's that's our primary focus, is enabling Unity developers to... Uh, make games, but the other component of it is a backend component, a REST API that is usable not only by Unity games, but by any any program that can make REST API calls through HTTP. So in theory, it would be possible to develop in Unreal, in Cocos, in other game frameworks or frameworks that might not be directly intended for games, as long as it can uh, do the sort of HTTP calls with access token based uh, authentication and authorization. Um, that's a, that's a pretty deep topic right now. I would, certainly in the context of a game jam like this, I would recommend using unity. That's, that's what we've focused on. That is the, primary intended purpose of Beamable is to enable Unity games. So what I'm doing here to, to sort of explain what I'm doing on screen is I've got a brand new project that I am installing Beamable to. And so Beamable itself is a Unity package like any other Unity package you might get from the Unity Asset Store or from other sources. Uh, if you want to play with it, go to, go to the link that Josh posted and... Um, uh, our, our documentation site has instructions for how to get started with Unity. So it's a matter of uh, using the installer package. I've got a convenient little install Beamable SDK button here. And uh, as soon as that does its work, I will have Beamable in, in my brand new project. Another question from the chat says, what happens when someone's connection is kind of unstable or wonky? That's a good question. So with the Game Relay server, uh, it, it is uh, assuming that the connections are going to be pretty stable and so that the, the messages are going to be able to get through in a timely fashion. Uh, it is possible to transmit world state as a kind of a sequence of actions so, so that game clients can catch up. And uh, yeah, so if if the game state gets too far out of sync, like whether the connection is bad or somebody's hacked their client to be cheating, if the game state gets too far out of sync, the it's a peer-to-peer -peer process, and the if if the quorum of players decide that one player is too far out of sync, it basically invalidates the game. It's just like this this match is is forfeit. The the, the game state got too far out of sync. Uh, once again, this is a sample project that's available on GitHub. So it's github.com slash beamable. Uh, you'll find a few sample projects, including this one called KOR, King of the Ring. And uh, it's it's basically a deterministic physics-based game using Beamable for matchmaking, leaderboards, and uh, connected game relay multiplayer. Not on screen. I've also got this game running on my phone. So I'm, I've got a multiplayer game playing against myself, one on the computer, one on the phone. And all of, all of the physics here is, is purely deterministic. So uh, KOR uses a deterministic physics library to simulate like these spheres and blocks and crates that are sitting around here. And so both my computer and my phone are doing the same physics calculations and using the game relay server to sort of cross check against each other and make sure that neither one of us is cheating. So this time I was the winner, I got 30 coins and that's gonna be reflected in the leaderboards so if I can find myself player W48, my score is 16. So I'm at the top of the leaderboards. 